My name is Marin Kinnikinney and I'm a nurse practitioner and an RD um, and I run an outpatient nutrition support clinic at Intermountain Medical Center in Salt Lake City, Utah. The purpose of this presentation today is to discuss a case of a patient with malnutrition who benefited from the use of PN therapy and she really feels like her life was saved. So let's get started with the patient's past medical history. She is a 67 year old female who in 2012, she underwent a Nissen fundoplication for Barrett's esophagus. She also had a cholecystectomy. She had severe complications afterwards with multiple surgeries, including a subtotal gastrectomy. Her primary problems have included severe dumping with ongoing nausea and vomiting. She was actually seen by Dr. DeBase at the Mayo Clinic in 2018, and he felt like she had an injury to her vagus nerve and possibly some ongoing and uh, undiagnosed connective tissue disorder. So through the years of 2012 and 2020, she was trialed on enteral tube feeds with a gastrojejunostomy tube, and she was also trialed on parental nutrition in the past. She quickly developed cholestatic liver disease on the parental nutrition, and she never gained weight on tube feeds. Her weight went from 190 pounds prior to her surgeries to as low as 76 pounds. The patient was getting by and just eating orally. She was maintaining her weight around 103 pounds until February of 2020. In February of 2020, the patient had a small bowel obstruction with a cecal volvulus that needed a surgical revision. In addition, that same month, she needed several of her teeth pulled and says she couldn't chew or swallow food very well. The patient rapidly lost 20 pounds, which was 20% of her body weight, and left her with a BMI of 13. The patient was maintained on outpatient IV fluids or banana bags through her gastroenterologist until the nutrition support service or my service was called to initiate nutrition support. Because this patient was so frail, I was concerned about her refeeding in the outpatient setting. And so she was admitted to Intermountain Medical Center under the hospitalist service to start parental nutrition therapy. So after the patient was admitted, her existing port was accessed. She actually had a better inpatient course than was expected her overall caloric goal was around 1,400 calories per day, and so we started her at 50% of goal, which was 700 calories, 1,500 cc's of fluid, 2 grams per kilo of protein, small flipid on an 18-hour cycle. She developed some mild lower extremity edema, some hypoglycemia off her TPN, but otherwise she felt good, and she had some pre-existing anemia. These are her labs. Um, on the inpatient setting um, after we started her on her TPN. Um, you can see that her sodium uh, corrected and her potassium corrected and we gave her some riders and then adjusted it in the TPN. Her calcium level, her albumin, and her magnesium level actually went up a little bit, but I didn't decrease it in her PN therapy because she had some cramping in her legs and so we just kept it the same. Um, her hemoglobin hematocrit, as mentioned, were on the lower side, and sh we have plans to, uh, and we did treat her with IV uh, iron therapy after she discharged. Here is her home PN uh, prescription, her initial order after she left. Uh, we kept uh, some thiaminophilic acid in initially for the first week or so, and um, she dropped down to a 14-hour cycle. Um, she tolerated that pretty well. She started having a little bit um, random signs of hypoglycemia, but um, mostly again when they when she was off her TPN. And then uh, we tried to dial in on her diet again during these times and and work with her because she wasn't the best about um, what she was taking in orally. So. After that first week, then uh, the thiamine and folic acid was removed and her calories were increased a little bit. Um, that second week, she actually started to develop more signs of hypoglycemia. This was even on her PN and off. 
and um, that was a little bit puzzling. Um, I think she was starting to eat a little bit more and maybe uh, doing a little bit more fruit, and so that was causing more dumping, but um, it was also potentially a little more refeeding issues going on, but uh, we chose to add back in the thiamine and folic acid. We tried actually backing off on our calories. That didn't seem to make much difference, um, but we just kept in the thiamine and folic acid, really worked with her diet, and the hypoglycemia tended to just even out for her, and, and she did much better. So really, in conclusion, this is a patient with a history of a subtotal gastrectomy, severe dumping, and an inability to tolerate enteral feeds, and really much of a, of a consistent oral diet. She had a 20% loss of her body weight in one month with a BMI of 13, with visual loss of fat to her temples, scapula, clavicles, readily apparent. The patient started on PN in the hospital. She had low potassium, which was replaced, but otherwise her electrolytes were stable. We continue to work with her low blood sugars on the outside, outside of the hospital setting in her home environment. She was discharged after three days. Um, her PN continued to be slowly advanced to goal, and the patient was taught in the hospital how to care for her, her you know, line at home and how to run her PN at home. She and her husband were taught. Her weight is now over 90 pounds, and she is eating, again, a small amount of solid food. I don't know if she'll ever be able to really eat enough to, to maintain a healthy weight. Um, it will take a few months, I think, for that to happen. Uh, we are replacing her B12 and zinc in the PN as well as her other vitamins, but the patient is high risk and will need to continue afterwards. So we'll um, also continue the thiamine and the folic acid for a month, and then all these levels will be checked in about two months. She had no issues with her liver that she had in the past with her PN therapy. She developed that pretty quickly in the past, and she, her liver function tests have been completely normal. Um, I suspect that was a combination of maybe being on continuous therapy, maybe too many calories, and having intralipid versus small lipid. Um, whatever it was, um, I'm grateful that she has not had any problems with it this time around. So that is the end of my case study today. Here are some references um, for you to have if you have any further questions about that. And this educational offering has been sponsored by Fresenius Kabi. And here are some other um, websites that you can visit if you would like more information. Thank you so much for your attention today.